is amazing. Now, as we've said, uh, the, sorry, the, the writers didn't originate the message, but they received it. And an important passage to show that is Jeremiah 38, 21. But if you refuse to surrender, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. The prophets didn't say, I'm not going to talk about the hell before today. It was given to them. They originated it. Sorry. Now, one funny question that you may be asked that. Uh, some people ask, were, were the prophets always conscious that they were inspired by God? Were they always realizing, ooh, I'm being inspired by God? The Bible is not 100% clear, but we can assume from Bible verses that the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, there are certain passages, uh, 1 Peter 1, 12, Revelation 1, 10, 11. We see Bible writers actually recognizing that they were inspired by God. Now, the answer of men was very different. Some struggle. Inspiration doesn't mean that you're going to be happy-go-lucky. Did Jonah was happy with his message? No. What did he do? Go, God told him, go there. He went there. If you look at the map, it's complete of opposite direction. Some had a very active role in the inspirational process, while others relegated it to the background. Uh, what do I mean by that? Some participated in their vision. Uh, John ate things. Uh, others, you cannot even see them. So we can say that there is a degree of presence. Some uh, writers are more present than others. But it does not mean that their writings is less inspired. Do you get that? Because, uh, let me think of something. Uh, because uh, John, in his gospel, doesn't mention his name. Does it mean it's less inspired, or uh, he doesn't do anything? When Daniel, uh, he, uh, Daniel chapter 2, he didn't even receive the vision, and when he explained it, he didn't do anything, he just explained it. Not like John, who had to eat something, it was bitter, and so on and so forth. Does it mean it's less inspired? No. So we recognize that some uh, prophets are more present than others. doesn't mean their message is less inspired. And again, all Bible writers, no matter how they reacted to the message, believed the source was the Holy Spirit. You read that in 1 Timothy 4.1, for example. But let's be clear. Can you be inspired and not write? Let me ask you that question. Can you be inspired by God and not write? Yes. Let me rephrase it to make it simpler. Can you be inspired by God and write books that are not in the Bible? Yes. yes. Now, a lot of Adventists jump right away to Ellen White. And wait. Okay. We need first to prove it from the Bible. Hey, by the way, uh, just to make it clear, I am an Ellen White. Uh, I believe in her gift of prophecy fully and completely, and I dear by the theology of the church. Actually, I believe uh, I was seven day Adventist because of what they teach. Okay? So you're not going to downplay Ellen White for me. But we first need to help our friends understand that it's a biblical concept. And the first place we find it in the Bible, John the Baptist, did he write? And he didn't have time. Poor man, he was beheaded just because of the dance. Is he? That's why Ellen White doesn't want you to dance. <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad joke. <laughs> but Jesus said himself, uh, Matthew, uh, in Matthew 11, 11, that there was no better prophet than him. He couldn't find it. Does this mean that because he didn't write, his gift, his inspirational gift was lesser? No. No, no, no. And there are other books. Nathan, do you know that Nathan, the, 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 the prophet, wrote a book? Dad, the prophet, wrote a book. Are they in the Bible today? Can you go and look at the book of Nathan? No, you can't. Enoch, Enoch wrote a book. Jude got inspired. Does it mean today? If we find Doug dead in the earth, the book of Enoch, what, do we have to put it in the Bible? No. no. What it tells you is that inspiration, God gives inspiration for a specific purpose. And sometimes messages were given for specific times to specific people, just like I believe Ellen White was given for a specific time to help us go through all those trials in 1844, 
poor and we were discovering new truths and everybody was going everywhere and she was a driving force. But if God had intended for her to be in the Bible, he would have made it. Understand? So, it is important to understand something. The inspiration that Nathan received was the same as David and they were authoritative in the same way. Remember David when he did with Bathsheba? Not pretty, right? It was very early. When Nathan came to him, did David say, Nah, you're not, your books aren't in the Bible, mine's are. Did he say that? No, what did he say? When Nathan confronted him in Numbers 12, if I'm correct, he acknowledged, uh, 2 Samuel 12, sorry, 2 Samuel 12, 7 and 13, he acknowledged that the words that Nathan spoke were the words of the Lord. So even if you don't write books, even if your books are not from the Bible, does this mean your inspiration is less? No. We do not believe, and I will put it up in the fly, this is what we call the theory of degree of inspiration. Uh, I like to shorten it by to do uh, That's just me. The Bible never teaches. And unfortunately, I, I was, I was uh, discussing the Bible with a uh, member of the House of Yahweh, uh, which is a cult. And basically at the point, I was, he was telling me, well, yeah, but you still have to kill a lamb, and they believe that you still have to do all the ceremonial process, and that you still need to, uh, they, 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 uh, they give offerings, and they have their tabernacles, just like Israel. And I pointed him to Daniel and said, well, Daniel says that Christ would bring the end of this. Yeah, but Daniel is not as inspired as the book of Leviticus. Whoa. What does the Bible say? But it's the first text that we read, 2 Timothy 3.16. All oh. oh, scripture, Amen. Is inspired. But not only that, the Bible doesn't diminish Nathan, who is not in the Bible. At least his books are not in the Bible. Uh, he doesn't diminish Gad. He doesn't diminish John the Baptist. The Bible is unique. I have to erase it again. The Bible is unique because there is a combination, there is a meeting between the divine and human. There is a meeting between the divine and human. Or is the Bible given in human words? Yes, it is. Were the message given in inspiration in human words? Yes, they are. But are they fully divine? Yes, they are. And a lot of people have struggles struggle sometimes understanding it. One example you can give them is Jesus. Who is the Word? Jesus is the Word. Was Jesus fully God? Yes. Was Jesus fully man? Yes, He was. And so, Jesus becomes an analogy. It helps explain the Bible. Now we know that God went to great lengths to safeguard the manuscript. Actually, it's amazing that uh, it, it's amazing that the manuscripts were kept that well. That we still know the mic, that we still uh, can know exactly what the Bible uh, talks about. And uh, I, I think Angel is going to touch more on that. But the message given by God talks about the future, and as Calvin said, it makes it trustworthy. If you need to trust in the inspiration of God, prophecy is here as, a, as, a, as almost as a proof, as a reliable way to guarantee that what God 